Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Green, and with me is my wife, Dee. As we continue to work our way back, we believe the first thing to get back to is prayer. After 40 years of ministry, we know that prayer changes things. You're not alone. If you need prayer, call the MTC Christ is Center prayer line. Or submit your prayer request online, mtcfc.org. Remember, Remember we're, we're here, here for, for you, you, and, and we've, we've got, got your back. back. Well, praise the Lord, my friends, and come on in to 2024 again. I know we've already started the year. It's 2024. Let me, before I pull out too much, say welcome to another edition of Conquering Your Entire World. I'm Steve Green. I'm the senior pastor of MTC, i.e., More Than Conquerors, More Than Conquerors Faith Church. That's who we are. That's who we've been. I know it's 2024, but we've been that since 1982, making that some 41, going on the 42 years, been running for God, running for God, not running from, been running for God a long time, ain't got tired yet, Mississippi Mass Choir used to say, <laughs> amen. Well, uh, it's 2024, and it's the year that the Lord hath made, uh, let's rejoice and be glad in it. So much has happened, 2024, our commitment is still the same, happy new year to you i'll be saying that for 30 days i want to these first 36 days is a tithe of the year right up until february the 5th we got a devotional out i don't know if we could pull that up or not but uh, i put together a devotional uh 36 representing 10 percent of 365 days to help get you started a lot of these scriptures are coming out of Isaiah, which means Jehovah is salvation. We need the Lord to save us. Psalm 118, to deliver us. Save now, O God. Psalm 118 says, send now your prosperity. Send now your abundance. I'm going to be talking about, even though last year was 2023, and this is 2024. Yes, I'm going to be talking about the 24 factor that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But don't forget about 2023 not too fast my friend that says that was the year of the good shepherd and the last thing he promised was in john 10 10 i am come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly so i'll be talking about abundance abundance abun a b u N. what kind of a hamburger bun uh, hot dog bun what kind of bun I ain't got into that okay now I'm talking about a bun dance the kind of bun you know what the bun you put something in between the hot dog and hamburger what is God going to put in between your dance <laughs> a bundle that's what it's going to be a bundle of joy <laughs> amen we're all excited about it we're going to go actually into a service uh, a couple of uh, Sundays uh, ago where we were, uh, actually it was a baby dedication service. It was uh, the New Year's Eve, and I won't show that. You could go online and see the service in its entirety, but we'll go into that, and I won't pick it up, and I mean, it's going to get ballistic. It's going to get cray-cray crazy. You're going to be dancing, so I warn you, if it's been a long day for you today, get in a good spot because the Holy Ghost is getting ready to throw down. And at the tail end, we'll give you just a little bit of the sneak preview of what happened on that uh, New Year's Eve night at the watch party service here at MTC where we had our uh, guests come in. Well, of course, we had our uh, in-house, uh, of course, a uh, uh, Band of Liberty and Double Portion, Voices of Judah, Praise Team, a little bit of everybody ministering there. And you know we had to go international there, as you've been seeing on our Facebook page with uh, Jacqueline Carr and with Leon Timbo and Michael Stampley and uh, Bishop uh, McKen McClendon and, and uh, so forth and so on. Man, they, Dr. Jamal Prime, just everybody. And Pastor Green, of course. I mean, somebody I'm sure I left out off the cuff, but that night was everything promised. We had so many people wondering, are are these people going to be there live? Or are they going to even show up at all? 
pleased to know that all of them did video greeting salutations and the, the night was absolutely crazy. You'll do yourself a favor to go check that all out. We'll also be announcing uh, 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 in the not too distant future, we'll be getting ready for our annual X Your Size. You maybe sing a flyer that X Your Sire Exercise, January 2024. We're calling that paying attention to your body. And uh, financial seminar too is not too far behind, uh, uh, not too far. And a couple of weeks ago, we'll be dealing with uh, wing coverage, wing coverage. What do you mean by that, wing coverage? That he that, that God says that dwells in his secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and he will cover us with his feathers and under his wings. Not talking about chicken wings, we're talking about God says, I got you covered. Like a blanket. <laughs> We're not talking about the insurance. We're talking about what happens when God's got you covered. He said, I got your slack. So without any further delay, I hope you're ready. I mean, uh, are you hungry? Are you ready? Not for some football. Are you ready for Jehovah Jireh, our provider? We had a nice backdrop earlier talking about who Jehovah Jireh. He's the one that's, that provides for us. Are you ready to meet El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough? Uh, are you ready to meet Jehovah Siri, the rock of our salvation? Because he's got, uh, are you ready for Emmanuel, God with us and God for us in 2024? So, gentlemen, brothers, sisters, start your engine. Let's go into that service. It's going to get crazy. I promise you that. Then after, we'll introduce some other things uh, as we continue to navigate uh, into 2024, a, a year that we call last for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Surrender. Oh, even your children, if they're 10, 20, 30, Lord Jesus, I...
I'm a travailing prayer. It's more than the pediatrician that's needed for the correct formation. It takes travail. You didn't hear what I said. The stethoscope cannot handle everything. Come on. The thermometer can't handle everything. If there's going to be a correct formation, there must be a travailing. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there, right there, right there, right, right there, right there. A deep chord. Right there, right there. Hi! To the glory of God, yes. To the glory of God, yes. To the glory of God, yes. Ooh. My little children, my little children. Yeah. My God, Dale. Blessed. Not curse, bless. Lord God. I surrender to you. They will not go into detention. Now. I don't surrender them to the police. Uh, I don't surrender them to DHR. Uh, I do not surrender them to the law. Uh, I don't surrender them to crack. Uh, I do not surrender them to gangs. Uh, oh, Lord, yes. I surrender them to you, Lord God. Uh, to you, Lord God. Uh, to you and only you, Lord God. Hi! Yay! To the my my blessed Savior! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh! What an anointing in this room! What a presence of the Lord is in this room! What a presence of the Lord is in this room. What a presence of the Lord is in this room. Hey, better quit. You gotta get that. Presence of the Lord is here. Presence of the Lord is here. I feel it all in the atmosphere. Presence of the Lord is here. Oh, yes, it is. Presence of the Lord is here. Power of the Lord is here. Power of the Lord is over there. Feel it all in the atmosphere. Power of the Lord is here. Power of the Lord is here. The shepherd of the Lord is here. You shepherd your children. If you love me, feed my sheep and my lamb. But the shepherd of the Lord is here. I'm talking about the good shepherd. I ain't everybody's shepherd, but I am to some people. If they forget it or not, the shepherd Jehovah is here. We get too familiar. Get it straight, tell them, Tiffany. Forgot. Ooh, the evangelists are crying out one, Catrice another, and Misha. The evangelists let those tongues rise, but between the two of you, let that rise. She's travailing, God's forming. And we've been so busy after performances. 
We've been so busy trying to get performances that we'd have messed the form up. This is not a performance. This is not about anybody other than Christ. Paul had the right to Galatians chapter 1, and he says around verse 7, I marvel that you are so soon removed from the faith, that you went AWOL as if you had been formed in the house of God. Is that what he said? I'm just telling you, after 43 years, uh, on the 29th, a couple of days ago, celebrated 43 years that I answered the call of God. 43 years ago. 43. I don't need no support. I'm just telling you, it ain't my first rodeo. So I'm not in the performances. We were uh, thanking God for all those that came through, all that God's connected us with, Ja'Kalen Carr, Elder Stewart. I mean, it ain't just me. I'm standing on the back of other people. That connection, man. You know real sons because they'll get doors open for you. David said, look, I don't, I, I don't know nothing about this, but he knew this. If the man of God needs something, I'm going to use what I got to help him out with them. baskets, not casket, tennis shoes. That's what we got watching the last days, don't we? Form. Performance. We're coming back tonight for, Charles, we're coming back, but we ain't coming back for no, for no performances. You've been around a long time. You know what, man, you, you've been changing. If you ever thought I was in performance, you've been go. You've always been no nonsense. Am I right about it? So we don't get all caught up as people come and go. They just gave the report from a shepherd's standpoint. Sheldon just took it all away from children's church. I ain't never heard him two work, but he testified about the family now. You're talking about a report of your faith, Elder Stewart. Luke 145 says there will be a performance of his word. Isaiah 57 says, I will cry unto God most high who performs all things for me. I'm not into form. Timothy says in 2 Timothy 3 and 7, in the last days men shall have a, a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Right, Sharon? You feel the same way, right? Mamas and grandmothers, you have to take over Wilson and handle respect rallies and, and do what you do, man. This ain't no performance. This stuff real to you. You got your ways, I got my ways, but one thing, we love God, don't we? We don't get it done, ain't we? And we've been running for God a long time. And we ain't got tired yet. I'm waiting on the next group. I'm, I got to live long. I got to live long enough to see them babies grow up. <laughs> if I have to stay here all night like Simeon and Anna did, waiting in the temple. But this new problem, folk don't stay in churches, and it's a new thing. God, that ain't the new thing God's doing, boo. That ain't it. You've been hoodwinked, possibly bamboozled. Could be a might case of dementia when the spiritual one Alzheimer's my daddy called it old timer's disease maybe you have got that you have made a lot of progress me too right I feel the same way 43 years ago I made a lot of progress I ain't what I'm gonna be but I tell you what I know I'm a whole lot better I, I only refer to Charles a lot, man. You know, we there trying to move in Woodland Avenue and trying to get in there. You paint them walls on the ladder. Your younger days just trying to get in a warehouse building. I don't know if you get on them ladders like that now, but you just have to let Benjamin Franklin get on the ladder for you now. Just let send them on a few errors for you. Let them do it now. Ooh. Who have been his counselor? Isaiah 40. And we had all that little script all the time. Yeah, what we going to do is at 1001, 1002, we're going to be out and all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get out and tell Lord Jesus, help us, God. Help us, God. There is a word uh, for the Lord. That was the corporate. Let me bring the closure. 2024, Elder Green said, I would say. Uh, and at the same time, bring some method as I see it. I'm not a manipulator. I'm not a schemer. 
I promise you not. I do know how to uh, make things work together for good, line on line. I thank God has taught me how to do that. He's given me the tongue of the learn. I love what Paul says about that in 2 um, Corinthians chapter 4. He says, we do not handle the word of God deceitfully. We have committed ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. 2 Corinthians 4. And it says, now after he reveals it to us, we're not handling the word of God with trickery. Verse 4 would say, if our gospel be hid, maybe it looks like trickery because you don't know the word. If it's hid, it's hid to those that are lost. In whom the God of this world, that ain't talking about Jehovah, that's talking about Satan. God owns the earth. Satan owns the world system. The earth is the Lord's, but Satan is the God of the world. That's the difference. The geography, every inch, every space, every office, every real estate, if you need a home, that is the Lord's. Psalm 24. One of them 24, so I'm going to get two in 20, 24. Everybody say, the earth is the Lord's. So if I were you, I would never worry about where I'm going to live, what geography, or what apartment, whether a house. I would never worry about that at all because the earth, all every inch, every space of it belonged to God and the fullness thereof. Amen. It's just a matter of when you're going to get it. The problem is somebody else in it right now, but you just got to go through a couple of red seas and some floods to get it. But it's yours, and when you get it, you won't possess it. You will repossess it because it was God's all along. But you got to dispossess somebody that's in your place, in your space, in your house. So God says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He ain't fitting to do nothing. It's already done. Won't you give God a hand of praise for all these babies? Every place they're going to live is already done. So uh, the God of this world had blinded the minds of those that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine. And God who commanded the light to shine out dark is now shining to our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus. Right? The problem in the dichotomy is this. We're troubled on every side. We know he got it all. We know that Jesus owns it in all three realms. But we are troubled on every side. Hmm. I did a message one time called trouble and triumph at the same time. We're troubled on every side, but we are not distressed. We are persecuted, but we're not forsaken. The word forsaken means abandoned. It describes a mother that don't want her baby anymore and drops the baby off at the fire department. Abandonment. God has not abandoned you. He hadn't dropped you off for the world to do whatever they want to do to you. you that was a good place. I'm going to try that. We are persecuted, hard driven, but we are not abandoned. God has not abandoned. I'm going to be talking about abundance but look like I'm hearing the word abandoned, persecuted, but not forsaken. Right? We are perplexed, but we're not in despair. Perplexed is, is not the, uh, it means, I'm perplexed about that. But I'm not going to go into despair. Perplexed means a puzzle, but not the one that you get at McDonald's but only got five pieces and you can put it together because they're so large. Perplex means complex. It's like the jigsaw puzzle that's got 500 pieces that you can't put together. You got so many pieces going on in your life that you could go in despair. We're perplexed, which sometimes end up being complex. Right? And produces a negative reflex. Right? It's just natural for you to go off. We're perplexed, but we're not in despair. And the last one I like, he says, we're cast down, but we're not cast out. Which means we're struck down, we're knocked down. We're on strike two, but we haven't struck out. Tell somebody, I need you to know it's December, but I'm still at the plate. I'm still trying to hit it over the fence. I'm, yep, a couple of fastballs. I'm struck down. Look like I'm down. A couple of fastballs came and pressed me back and knocked me down, but I'm not struck out. You better give God a praise that on this January 31st that you are not struck out. I'm going to need you to give God a praise for that, please. 
Some of you got perplexed situations. You know you got so many pieces going on, you really don't know what to do. All right, let's do this as quickly as we can. Uh, understanding uh, abundance. Everybody say, what he's talking about is understanding abundance. Real quickly, we got to go fast. Understanding uh, is on the screen. Uh, say that uh, last word for me. Uh, bond dance. I don't ever want you to see abundance as abundance again. I want you to call it abundance. Abundance. Because when God gets through giving you your abundance, you're going to be dancing all over the place. You're going to be shouting all over the place. You're going to be skipping. You're going to be hopping. Me and Ms. Stroud got this thing going on uh, uh, where we talk about when, when we see God just really blessed and the finances are overflowing. She said, I know what you're doing, Pastor. When you saw that financial report, you went skipping over that report. Why don't you look at somebody and say, in a few more days, you're going to be dancing all over the place because your ship is getting ready to be. Come on. You might well go with what you've been crying about. I got chapter and verse. God's about to sink your ship and move your feet. Will you give God a praise that you're going to be back on your feet again? Oh, come on. I'm going to end this thing where I started. In John 10, 10, in a moment, I'm going to say the thief came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I'm come that you what? might have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, so the end of the year, I want to uh, close where I started. He says in John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. Uh, and when he gets through with you, what you've been crying about, you get ready to start dancing about. Will you give God an abundance? That's over in John 10, 10. 11 says, I am the good shepherd. Uh, as a topic, just to keep it on the page, uh, I want to go a little deeper to it, time permitting. I want to talk about what dance is uh, because this is the beginning. Tonight uh, is, is a, an omen. It's a forecast. It's a shadow. The reason we're taking dance back because dance uh, is, a, 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 it is a foreshadow and a forecast uh, of the future. Uh, it is dance as a colon on the screen. What dance is, one of the definitions, uh, it means more than the move the feet rhythmically whether you uh, got a song and ain't got no melody no I ain't talking about no rhythm I'm not talking about uh, you know uh, African Americans that got two four and uh, Caucasian well, I ain't talking about that because can't nobody dance for real because if you ain't if the enemy come against you it don't matter what color you are he come to steal kill and destroy but if, if, if you know that God done set you free you ought to start moving your feet like I don't care if I got rhythm or not uh, come on somebody will you give God a praise for an abundance What is dance? What is dance? I gave one meaning. Dance is God's answer to mourning. God, uh, dance is God's answer to mourning. Uh, see, in the last days, you got to be knowing this. Uh, God has already told us uh, that there will be a multiplicity of death. Uh, we will live in perilous time. But God said, you're going to know that you're coming and escaping death uh, by what's going on with your feet. You're going to see this in the Passover when the death angel came through Egypt. They have been in, the God, the Israelites have been there 400 years. Uh, God told them to do one thing. He didn't say put nothing in your pocket, put nothing on your head. But what he told them to do is put some shoes on your feet. Uh, because you're getting ready to dance yourself all the way to the promised land, all the way to the bank. Uh, some of you feel like dancing right now. Don't mess my service up. I'm still in the introduction. It means to move the feet. Come on, somebody. And the only reason you couldn't because the negative aspect of dance, let me prophet, let me begin to prophetically interject this, uh, the opposite of dance, uh, is an ambulance. If you are ambivalent and full of ambiguity, double-minded, uh, an ambulance comes when you knock off your feet to, to carry you. When you're ambivalent, come somebody, the, the negative part of dance is an ambulance. Uh, it's a paraplegic, uh, one that's in a wheelchair. It's somebody that's been dropped like Mephibosheth, but you're not a paraplegic. Uh, you didn't roll in here in an ambulance. You came here on your feet. You better give God a praise. Uh, and if you are in a wheelchair, God bless you. Uh, this is not an ambulance service. Uh, you will not be taken from your job because of a heart attack. Your children will not be called. Uh, uh, to, uh, the prince will call you and say, your child has been shot down. Uh, because on that, this is a preambulatory service to let you know that you are about to be back on your feet again. God turns mourning into dancing. That's why we're going to party tonight. Uh, that's why we're going to dance tonight. 
we're going to reach our hand in the devil's kingdom that took one of God's most celebrated strategies and put it in a dark room and club and look at us crazy. Not only do you not dance in the club, you don't even dance in church. Let me slow it down just for a moment. Dance, God's answer to morning. And last but not least, paving the road for the future. Oh, my God. Paving the road. Your, your feet uh, uh, are like one of those machines that paves the road. He's broken up. See, in order for a road to have new construction, you got to tear up the old road, don't you? You got to, some of you ain't got nothing but gravel. Come on, by. but I hit the gavel over your gravel right now. I make a decision right now that God's paving a new way. I'm going to show you, and it's going to be so clear. The glory of God is going to pave the road for your future. I dare you look at somebody and say, God's paving the road uh, for your future, and he's not using a machine. Uh, he's using the angels to get it done. Uh, oh, I wish I had time. See, one of the reasons it's going to be so important uh, that we be in the house of God. And I've already prayed this part that y'all putting together that Bethesda that's bringing people from the world. We don't know who's coming in here. Well, see, I've already got up and prayed this morning uh, that the angel of the Lord encamps uh, the place. You better not be going anywhere where ain't no angels around. Psalm 34, 7, because the devil has released his anger against every secular institution. And if you make it through, you will only make it through uneventful because it is of the Lord's mercies that you would not consume. Uh, I just told you that the systems of the world, the clubs of the world belong to Satan and he can bomb anyone at any time. But we have no right to complain about we have no, what we have no solution for. I said the angels of the Lord. Uh, and I heard the Lord said, uh, I want you to call for a dispatchment of angels. Because the people in trouble need an ambulance, a rescue, a fire department. They get out 911 and they hit the dispatch. And so they have to release and dispatch a, a policeman. I am dispatching a million angels uh, over the city of Birmingham. Y'all ain't talking to me. I called 111. I didn't call 911. I called one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And I asked God to release at least a million angels around more than conquerors and to remind the devil that this is holy ground uh, that there's a firewall built around this party oh you better give God a praise uh, God's a dispatcher and wherever you're gonna be you better make sure even if you at somebody's house party you better make sure there are angels around there Jesus So this is holy ground. Everybody say, this is holy ground. Uh, I got to let every devil know that we're trying to sabotage uh, MTC. That this is holy ground. Everybody say, this is holy ground. And when you get to your house, if you got some secular in private and you don't want to join the corporate, at least say, this is holy ground. Okay, quickly, quickly. Let me get ready to do some here. Write these key scriptures down. We'll look at them. Take a picture because we'll be moving fast. Here are key scriptures that I'm getting thoughts from. We ain't going to be here forever, but I do want you to take a picture of these. Keep it on the screen long enough for them to see it. I've already talked about John 10.10, 10, talking about abundance. Psalm 30, verse 11, we'll come back. It will talk about mourning. God's answer to mourning or death or grieving is dancing. Everybody that's lost a relative, you need to be at the dance tonight. Uh, Exodus 12, 11 will tell us that when God released Israel from bondage and from death, he told them when, uh, when he gets ready to bring them out, already be ready. Have your shoes on your feet. Uh, Bishop Jakes will say this way, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Tell somebody, you better get ready for what God's going to be doing. Ain't going to be no time for looking for a bridal dress. You better be looking for it now. Huh? Ain't no time to be talking about if somebody busted a move and gave you a million dollars. You need to already know what, huh, what you're going to do with that money. If you hit the lottery, you need to already say if I get a million, a hundred thousand belong to God. Uh, you need to go already and make a vow. If you give me ten thousand, a thousand belong to God. You got to put your shoes on your feet so that you don't lose it. It's told that people that uh, hit a, a lottery uh, are broke after two, three years because they don't have no plan. Uh, I want you to plan what you're going to do when God gets ready to sink your ship uh, so you ain't tripping thinking all of that belong to you. He's about to give you the power to get wealth that he may 
a step, but you can't be tripping if he can't trust you with a penny out of a dime and a dime out of the dollar and a ten out of the hundred and a hundred out of a thousand. Come on, and a thousand out of the ten and a ten thousand out of a hundred thousand. What would make you think he want to give you any more? But God said, tell him, I'm in a mindset of redistributing wealth, that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. There is a shifting. Uh, I heard somebody say, uh, uh, past, present, and future, that every time you see the economy shifting, uh, it's because God is transferring wealth. He's taking it out of somebody else's hand and redistributing it into your hand. I need you to give God a praise uh, like he's about to do what he did uh, with Exodus. Uh, when the Bank of Egypt had all the money, God told Pharaoh, let my people go. And when he let them go, it was a severance package. Uh, and the Bible said he brought them forth with silver and gold and there was not one feeble broke one among them. Look at your name and say, I sense the God uh, of Moses about to bust a move uh, in your pedigree. Everybody 400 years back uh, is about to get a back pay. You better dance, children, dance. You didn't hear what I said. I'm going to say that one more time. I want you to dance like if it don't happen to you, it's going to happen to your sons. It's going to happen to your daughters. Uh, a promotion they can't pronounce. Uh, a car that they cannot afford. Uh, a subdivision they can't even live in. Uh, I open your mouth uh, and get your shoes on and start looking at the furniture. Jesus. Jesus, son of the living God, Jesus. Woo. Getting ahead of myself. Uh, go ahead and look at Exodus chapter 12, 11. I haven't looked at it uh, in chronological. Bring that up right there. It's still standing. Exodus 12, 11 talks about the shoes. I will go on in a moment and talk about the clear of heaven uh, in a moment in Exodus 24. And in a moment, I will look at Deuteronomy chapter 11. Uh, that would tell us uh, that God is about to cause your feet uh, to water the year for you. When you dance, it's going to water your whole year from the beginning to the end. Oh, my God. I got the word of the Lord. There's about to be a restoration of dance. Uh, I had one of our sons uh, moving back to Birmingham saying, I've been in college for seven years uh, and I'm bringing my talent back home. I've been trained. Uh, I want to know, can I use any of my talent here? I said, all we've been doing is waving flags, uh, but you're a son of the house. Move yourself on back because uh, there's about to be a breakthrough and it's coming from sons that have been raised up. Will you give God a praise for your sons and your daughters? For God said this last day's move ain't going to be about your friends. Uh, in the last day I'm going to pour my spirit out on all flesh and your sons uh, and your daughters shall prophesy. Uh, I, your young men shall see visions. Uh, your old men shall dream dreams. Open your mouth and give God a dance. I won't be doing much preaching tonight. I'm just emceeing. I'm doing my preaching now. First apostles, uh, I wouldn't listen on that, but I'm going to preach you crazy. Dance, children, dance. Uh, this is the year of Jubilee. Dance, children, dance. The Lord has come to set his people free. Dance, children, dance. But this is the day of Jubilee. Come on and dance, children, dance. The Lord is here to set his people free. Come on and dance, children, dance. The Lord is here to set his people free. Exodus 12, 11, read it for me. Who's reading Exodus 12, 11? Because they still got the scriptures of Exodus 12, 11. Get your shoes on your feet. And I'm going to talk about the rest of them in a moment. Exodus, grab and, a mic. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded. Get your loins. They get ready to eat the Passover lamb uh, with your loins girded. And what else? Your shoes on your feet. Your shoes on your feet. Uh, your shoes on your feet. Uh, I'm going to forward on the moment. Stay right there. Uh, one of the reasons uh, 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 that we know that you're getting ready to move forward. Uh, you can go to my intro real quick. And, uh, stay right there in that scripture. And I'll go back. I, I make a statement here in my intro out of prayer that says, part of the clear signs clear signs that you are ready for destiny 
is shoes on your feet. We'll know that you are ready by what's happening on your feet. Because when you're on your feet, all the weight that you are carrying lands on your feet. Your feet must be able to carry and sustain everything that's in your head, in your hands. All that weight drops right down to your feet, meaning you are not defeated. So what do you say in Exodus 12? I'll, I'll go back what he says in those key scriptures. Exodus and does, 12, 11. And thus shall ye eat it with your lawns girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Oh, my God. So if you got shoes on your feet and a staff in your hand, staff represents authority. Staff represents your shepherd. Staff represents people that's working for you. You are going to, if you don't have a staff, then you need to be under somebody's staff because you are not going to make it through Shadows of death without a staff. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. You need comfort when you are mourning. So you need the staff of God. Moses takes the staff, which is a stick. What do you mean? We need people that's got stick to itiveness. That can stick through it. That can stick together. That's a candlestick. Ooh, I wish I had time this morning. Yes. Shoes on your feet. Amen. Let me slow this down a little bit here. Uh, let me. Look at a couple of these key scriptures. Back to the key scripture page. Let me go to Psalm 30, verse number 11. You know, we talking about facing death. This is the same scripture that everybody quote at funerals. That say, weeping in verse 5 may endure for a night, but joy is coming. Joy is not coming in the morning. It's coming in the morning. Your joy is not in the morning. Elmo, you are, you got to come out of that morning looking all crazy and stiff. You ain't, you ain't, you, you losing time. Let your moderation be known unto men. Yes, if you ain't showing, the, uh, Brother Brasfield said you a city on a hill. On. Let your light so shine that they may see your good works. If anybody got to wonder if you got joy, you stuck, boo. Come on now. Yes, sir. Yes. Now it's going to get real good. I did a lot of preaching there. Thou hast... What? Turn for me. Thou has turned. He's not turning against you. He's turned some stuff for you that you can't turn around, which means it's your turn now. <laughs> no pun intended. It's your turn. Tell somebody, it's your turn now. But you can't turn it for yourself. Thou has turned. There are some things I cannot turn for myself. Thou has what now? Turn Thou has for turned me. for me. My morning. Into dancing. God does this. He's not bewitched. A Sabrina, a Tabitha with a turning a frog into a princess. What he does, he look at you with your stoic grave self. And he turns for you your morning into dancing. Because uh, you are either in two states right now. You are in a state of mourning or you are in a state of dancing. But you cannot be in both. Uh, you cannot be in both. And if you can't move your feet, move your hand. Do something to show you're alive. If your leg hurt, your mouth ain't hurting, is it? Your hand's not hurt. You ought to be doing something. But you can't just sit there. You can't just stare at us. This is not a performance. This is a group of people that's coming out of stuff. Pharaoh done had his turn. It's our turn now. A 
abundance. Everybody say abundance is coming. Abundance. Tell somebody I feel. Tell somebody I, I feel Elijah's anointed. Everybody better quit. I lose right here. I hear the sound uh, of the abundance of rain. Uh, I hear the sound uh, of abundance of rain. Uh, it, it's amazing that they're already forecasting in Birmingham uh, that it's going to rain somewhere uh, between midnight and in the morning uh, because the first release in a dried out area is going to be rain. Tell somebody I hear rain. Uh, and rain is indicative of watering your dry places. Uh, I dare you to look at three people and say your drought is over I announce your drought is over your health is not drying up your faith is not drying up your joy is not drying up your church is not drying up somebody give God a wet praise Habakkuk calls it a wet praise W-E-T Habakkuk calls wet W-A wild W-E an enthusiastic uh, a triumphant somebody give God a wet praise right now I said open your mouth uh, and give God a wet praise uh, somebody give God a wow praise Woo! everybody said church go wow church go wow open your mouth and some pocket hammer run dance shout do something stupid now leap for joy Jesus, my God, Jesus, Woo. do something, show some sign, do something, smile, grab your hair, pull your weave off, do something, but you're not going to mess this service up, you are not going to sabotage this service with your cerebral praise. Huh? With your intellectual praise, uh, I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, his praise uh, shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, uh, my soul shall make a boast uh, in the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt uh, his name together. Uh, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Oh, taste and see. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, uh, but God will deliver us out of them all. Ooh, I better quit. I won't preach tonight. I feel like praising, praising Him. I feel like praising, praising Him. Praise Him in the morning. Praise him all day long. I feel like praise, praising him. I feel like praise, praising him. Oh, I feel like praise, praising him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him all day long. I said, I feel like praise, praising Him. Got a word. If you don't want to praise Him, don't hinder me. If you don't want to praise Him, don't hinder me. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him all day long. I feel like praising, praising Him. One more time, if you, if you don't want to pray, don't hinder me. Oh, if you don't want to pray, don't hinder me. I'm going to praise him in the morning. Praise him all day long. I feel, I feel. Here, come on. Praise them in the morning. Praise them all day long. Oh, I feel you. Praise them, praise them. Tell somebody to party and already start. I'm free. Weeping may endure for a night. 
up the loins of your mind. there you have it my friend just that service was just i mean it just kept going from glory to glory to glory abundance if you've never been a dancer god said he will turn your morning into dancing psalm 30 11 right over in ecclesiastes 3 he said it's a time to mourn and it's a time to dance we are declaring in the city of birmingham this is not the time to be mourning this is the time for us to start dancing what kind of dance are you talking about pg i'm talking about a Abundance. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Just as we saw though over there in Deuteronomy 11, it says, man, I'm going to bring you into a land that I promise you. You all check it out. It says a land that the Lord cares for. Uh, I don't know if we can find that or not, but I'm, I won't go there too much. But it says a land that the Lord cared for from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. A land that you water with your feet. I say your feet is like a sprinkler. Every time you dance, you just send the water that just begin to uh, uh, from your dance, begin to water the seed that you planted uh, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. What a powerful scripture. I don't know if we're going to find that or not, Deuteronomy. I may be off. Uh, you may be able to find it, Deuteronomy 11. If so, you bring it up. I'll keep kind of trying to pay attention on that, but I do know this. That is the year that the Lord had made, and we're rejoicing. We're glad in it. We talked about a time where dancing is like pavement. It's the clearance of God. I, you know, I really addressed that a little bit, just a little bit on this past Sunday, talking about how uh, the dancing is more than emotional and Pentecostalism. No, either you're mourning or you're dancing there. So uh, we're excited about all that God is doing. We were shown up doing some dancing and praising and celebrating at More Than Congress on New Year's Eve uh, watch service 
my Lord. I mean, the band of Liberty Fuel, the place started now. The Elder Thompson exhorting. Uh, we were hearing from of our international artists greeting us like Ja'Kalen Carr and Leon Tempo. Man, it was just off the chain. Bishop McClendon, Dr. Cindy Trim, uh, just the whole night, Dr. Jamal Bryant. Michael Stamplin just, oh my God, this place, this altar was filled. I know you still see the poinsettias. They're not just for Christmas, uh, but the altar was uh, filled. I mean, the whole floor, the whole aisle, people on their face, you know, four and 20 uh, elders uh, bowing, casting their crowns. It's a year of worship and so many other things that I've been talking about in Proverbs in 24, right? Genesis 24, God told uh, Eleazar by Abraham, go get that man a wife. So it's a year of engagement, a, a year of a wedding in Genesis 24. But Deuteronomy 24 says, if that don't go right, then when a man have taken a, a new wife and he found something cleanest, he going to send her away for the most petty things. So we better be mindful who we hook up with. So it says Deuteronomy 24. But then Proverbs 24 gives us instructions about a house. It says through wisdom is a house built. Through wisdom is a house built. Uh, that is any enterprise profit wonderfully through three things the living Bible says. Wise planning, common sense, keeping abreast of the facts. Matthew 24 talks about all the things that will, will happen as a result of the last days, wars, rumors, or wars. Uh, we got to make sure we're not just building building and structure, but we're building it according to the pattern with all these things in, in 24. And Galatians 1, 24 talks about they glorified God in me as a result of what had taken place. So so many dimensions of 24, but that night, uh, the four and the 20 elders, that was one place in that service, man. I'm telling you where, uh, you, uh, you know, uh, Michael Stampley, I mean, you know what I'm saying? He was just just going for it, man, and uh, we were answering each other. I was on one side of the floor. He was on the other side of the floor. We will feature all of that service next week, but right now, I want us to go into that place. Uh, I guess we decided not to find that scripture. Maybe in between sets and me, it's I'll help him find that. But we'll go into right now some snippets of that dance. And we'll come back and talk about how important it is that you, uh, why we, uh, what you're about to see here. You'll see several segments. You're going to see what happened, first of all, in the midnight service. I mean, not in the midnight service, in the watch service from 7 to 10. And we'll segue in to that party, the red carpet, the countdown and all that. And maybe I'll come back and talk a little bit about how important it is that you know God's going to take care of you from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Two segments here now. Let's go into first the 7 to 10, where uh, just snippets of what took place on the New Year's Watch. Then we'll segue into the countdown. You're now in more than conquerors praise celebration going into 2024. <music>
like the trumpet. Give God some praise. Band of Liberty is in the house. It's time to celebrate the goodness of our Lord. Come on, thank him. Give him praise with the fruit of your lips. Just for a few more seconds. Think about all that he has done for you in 2023. Bringing you to this place. He gave us the victory in 2023. And there is so much more coming in 2024. So give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on. I don't have to tell you to get crunk. I don't have to tell you to get lit. You ought to already be there because all you got to do is think about how good he has been to us in 2023. How many of you are excited about the Lord tonight as we prepare to give him the greatest celebration that we have ever given him? I don't care what we did in time past. This is the day that the Lord has made, and he deserves a great God, deserves a greater praise. Amen? Hallelujah. So we're here to celebrate the goodness of our God tonight as he has brought us through this year over mountains, some of us through valleys, some of us he just brought us out of the muck in the mire and put you on a solid place. And establish you to, you know, in your life and in your finances, in your marriage, amen, in your ministry. So you got a reason to praise God on this night tonight. If you believe that you can't make it without you, Jesus in your life, yeah, everybody sing for the top go hey, I can't make you without you.
Kenny Savage, oh, don't do that. Don't, don't give me that kind of jam. Uh, we got to set this up. Uh, oh, my God. You know, I just always like to go. Oh, we bring the praise. Uh, got to have that praise. Uh -oh. Come on, come on, come on. I know they're going to have a platinum party. Oh, man, but there's the Basama oh. United. Come on, come on, come on. I hear you. Got to have that praise. Oh, we. Come on, come on.
Okay, so the countdown 2024. Obviously, we're already in it, but uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We're in 2024. What, for us, the scripture we're using is in Joshua 24, 15 that says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He says, Now, if it seem evil to you, uh, the way we serve, because sometimes the way we serve seems like it's evil. I hear people saying all the time, well, don't take all that. It's almost of the devil for anybody to be in the church that long. 
Can we, you read Joshua 24, 15 that says, if that seems evil to you, which in the not too distant future, one of the things we're going to have to watch out for in, in 24 is things will not always be the way they seem. There is a way that seemeth right, but at the end there is the destruction. So you better be operating on the principles of God. But it says, but uh, uh, choose this day. Uh, if it seem evil, you see it on the screen. If it seem, if it seem evil evil unto you to serve the Lord. The way we serve God may seem evil too much. All that running, all that dancing, all that party, just straight from the devil, red carpeted, secular bank. If that seem evil to you, that's your little red wagon. If it seem evil to you, right, uh, the way we serve God, to serve God, to serve the Lord, you choose this day whom you will serve, how you're going to serve him, whether the gods which were on the other sides of the flood, right? Thank God, you know, empty sea, we've been through a lot in our time. And that was, we're on this side of the flood because the, the, the uh, history uh, and trajectory of the destiny of Israel can be divided between two bodies of water. When they were in bondage over here, they were on the Red Sea. God brought them from Egypt. They brought them with all the other gods there that Pharaoh had. They brought them to the Red Sea. That's one body of water. Then they were in the wilderness, but then they had to go through the, the flood, which was uh, not the promised land. But once they came through the flood, next thing after the flood is the promised land. Some of you, the enemy came in like a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord lifted up a standard against. So we on the other side. We were so much on the other side of the flood that when MTC first got started, Michael Walker, we had a building called the Flood. We call it the Flood Covenant because even though it would flood our building, God had a covenant that he, he, we would not drown, and Michael Walker would just sweep the water. That was on that side, but now that we've gone through Lom Avenue, now that we've gone through Den uh, Woodland Avenue and on Denison, we're on the other side of the flood. Now, to mention some stuff that happened in our story history that people may not want to let go. I remember back in. I remember 82. I remember 94. I remember they were this. You keep talking about what happened on the other side. And if it seems, if that seems evil to what God's doing, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. But watch this. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Please notice how many times in that verse you see the word serve at least four times because this is the year of to serve God. Well, I better get, get the step here because we'll be here all night if I don't watch it. Let's go. I promise you that scripture over Deuteronomy chapter 11. We'll look at them respectively where God says, I am going to literally take care of you from the beginning of the year uh, to the end of the year. You ought to be thanking God that God's got you covered from the beginning uh, uh, to the year to the end of the year. And he says, uh, uh, and uh, as they stayed uh, uh, in the mount according to, let's see, what verse was that? Deuteronomy 11. I want to make sure we go there. Was it verse? We're in chapter 10 there for me, guys. Wrong chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 11. I thought that read a little bit wrong. I think it's Deuteronomy chapter 11 that we're looking for, that we want to make sure that you understand that God's got you covered from January all the way to December of 2024. Amen. So it says, uh, there, uh, a land, it is a land that God's bringing to, the promised land, which the Lord your God, the land, this promised land, is the land that the Lord your God, watch this, careth for. What do you mean care for? There's a colon. He cared for the eyes of the Lord God uh, uh, upon that uh, all the way from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. Shut the front door. God cares about the United States. God cares about the county and the state and the city and your residence and your body. It's a land, that promised land that you are a little bit careful, anxious, apprehensive about, not just the geographical, but that territory that God gave you for, God cares for it. Therefore, you can cast all your cares upon it, for he cares for you. Now, let's go on down where it says, not only does he care for it from the beginning of the year to the end, but what you're going to have to do, if you're going to walk in this abundance, is you're going to have to water that thing with your feet. Uh, for the land uh, that you go is to, watch this, and you're going to possess it, uh, it's not like the uh, land of Egypt, watch this, from, from whence you came out of where you, watch this, sowed, you sowed your seed and you watered it with your 
foot. You, and it was like a garden. It was like a garden of herbs. You sowed your seed, but you watered it with your foot. The seed came out of your pocketbook. The seed came out uh, of your hand, uh, but you watered it with your feet. That means you're getting ready to go somewhere. And you all just start picking up your feet right now with your shoes on like you're ready to go somewhere because your feet represents the watering of your seed. That's why the enemy wants to defeat feet us and want us to come to church sit down uh, never get on our feet every time you get on your feet you are watering what you have sown every time you start moving on your feet and you go into missions you go into the hospital you go into all the world uh, you go into choir rehearsal you are watering what you sowed uh, amen uh, uh, back even in the old time they watered seed with their feet but then God said I'm bringing you to a place such a place that your revelation of God is not going to be like it was. It's, a, it's not a land that, that you came out of where you had to water the seed and you watered it with your feet. Now, thank God we're not just watering it with our feet. We're watering it with our head now. We're watering it with our hand now. We're watering it with our heart now. But you better know, uh, all those techniques still work. Uh, thank God for the whole arm of God. That's weapons in the New Testament. But David, if Goliath was here now, David can still pick up a stone from the brook and slay him. So dancing still working. That's why it still works. That's why Psalm 150 said, praise ye the Lord. Praise him uh, in his sanctuary. Praise him with the dance. Psalm 149. Praise him with the dance. And you're going to keep on serving God until you're going to end up in a bun dance. The bun dance is going to cause you to dance. Get on your feet and start doing what you need, it, need to do. All right. Right. Yeah, that was just a brief introduction of what was happening on New Year's. And let me, uh, before I close out here, invite you to a couple of things that will be happening in the not too distant future at More Than Conquerors Financial a Seminar. Note the date. We're calling it, we said, uh, Wing Coverage. There'll be several presenters from uh, More Than Conquerors that will deal with areas of finances, whether it's buying a house, buying a car, whether it's dealing with insurance, whether it's dealing with taxes. Uh, uh, that will be taking place uh, uh, in the not-too-distant future. So make sure you mark the dates that you see on the screen there. Uh, somewhere around the 20, uh, first, uh, 21st, I believe it kicks off on, which is a Sunday morning service at 10 o'clock. And it will continue on that Wednesday, which is the 24th of my mind, serves me right. But you certainly don't want to miss that as we're dealing with uh, being compliant with God's financial system. You cannot be expecting the windows of heaven to open and you don't understand the tithe system. Because remember now, the first thing that happened after they got across the flood they went into Jericho. That was the first city. It was a city of first fruits. So if you make it through the flood, if God then brought you out of poverty, if he's given you a job and given you that position, the first thing you run into is Jericho. Jericho represents two things. A shout. They shouted until the walls came down. And the first fruit. He told Achan, do not touch this first fruit because you got several other areas that you got to conquer. So all of Jericho belonged to him. The rest of the cities yeah, they could have, you know, they could have it, but they had to give God 10% of those. So you need more than just a shout. You need to understand first fruits. Achan didn't. When Achan, one person in the camp not understanding first fruit brought a curse on the whole camp. Is that possible? You know, sometimes people in prayer warriors, and all that, uh, you know, want to say, oh, man, I wonder if there's a curse in the camp. Well, if the preachers are not tithing and uh, bringing first fruit in the trustees and, and the intercessors, if you ain't bringing first fruit, as I remember, Achan, who was from the tribe of Judah, he caused the, his lack of understanding of the first fruit, cursed the whole camp. And what, what kind of sin was it? Didn't say it was an adulterer fornication, did it? Didn't say he was in lasciviousness, a sedition, or heresy. He wasn't trying to get a split, nobody to follow him. What sin did Achan commit in John Jeff, uh, in Joshua 7? God told uh, Joshua, get up off your face, go do a search in every house. And they found in uh, uh, Achan's house, he had taken money, he had spent uh, uh, had Babylonian garments. And when Israel got ready to go out and face the enemy, they underestimated him, uh, and they end up losing, and they chased him out of town, chased Israel out of town, because they underestimated the power of first fruits. I think you get what I'm saying there. So please, uh, we'll be dealing with all kinds of principles. You know, uh, Dr. Gass is a part of all you earn is yours to keep, but you ain't supposed to keep all of it, and you're certainly not supposed to keep the first of it. I hope you've uh, gotten involved uh, either a one-time first fruit offering or 
uh, incrementally you said I made a vow to God that I'm going to just track this until I pay it off. Then I'm going to start tithing. And then whenever there needs to be an offering, you're going to uh, do what God wants to do because he gives you power, Deuteronomy 8.18 says, to get wealth. He gives you power to establish his covenant, not to establish yours. I know some things you said you was going to have this uh, ragtop car convertible and all that, all that, and all the trips. That's all wonderful. I salute you for all that. But I want to know this. Have you given your first fruits yet? <laughs> Are you tithing yet? Uh, for what God can open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, and rebuke the devourer from destroying your seed. That's all I'm asking. I, mean, I can them and I'm just saying, I'm just saying, don't touch the dial now, Shambach and all the rest of them used to say. Now, that's for the financial uh, seminar. Now, somebody's all you talk about is just money. Can we now talk about your body? That was a form financial was talking about taking care of the body of Christ. Let's talk about your body. Even though we don't like taking care of the body of Christ, and that's what ties is for, for the priest and for the building and all that, we don't want to talk about the body of Christ. And I am of the persuasion that a lot of people's body cannot get healed because it's cursed with a curse. Amen. But I think that when you are tied to when you are a giver and the enemy comes in and tries to destroy you, God himself, uh, right? Uh, he says, I will rebuke the devourer. Therefore, cancer and nothing else will be able to eat up your body. Come on, somebody. Arthritis and nothing else. Uh, uh, any of the GI tracts, any of the colon, none else will uh, be able to tear up your body. Mental disease and schizophrenia, not of the, what is mental, physical, financial, right? So we want to make sure that we understand that God's got us covered. And we, we certainly don't want to miss uh, our understanding first. But the body. Uh, we're getting ready for what we call X your size. Paying attention to your body. Exercise 2024. Exercise. We did that in time past. I know we're uh, trying to bring that flyer up probably, but exercise is 2024. Yeah, God kept you alive. Some of you made it through heart attacks, made it through all kind of things, made it through COVID. But this is 2024. You think the enemy is silent? You think he won't come back? Sometimes he'll let you get healed, but sometimes he'll come back seven times worse, right? What the scripture tells us. But this is 2024. And, you know, we're getting people to sign up in our Zechariah prayer, A through M, E, N through Z. And we're calling it paying attention to your body. A-T hyphen T-E-N, 10 hyphen T-I-O-N. We're trying to say, okay, let's just start with small groups. Can we just get 10 trustees and uh, board of ministers, all that group together, all uh, one group, 10 of you? Can we get 10 elders, 10 double portion? Can we get 10 choir members? Can we get 10 visitors? Can we get 10 senior citizens? Ought to be well over 100 of us that night uh, that we will be having that on the 22nd uh, exercise, or we used to call it gym, you area, G-Y-M. Could call it G-E-M, you area, because uh, the gym is a G-E-M. You know, I know about gyms, right? Jim and I, Jim, Jim, you hear me? Uh, 20, 24, but X your size. The, the size of hatred, the size of uh, some of you smoke weeds, and I don't know what you, a nickel bag or whatever you used to call them. I don't know what it is, but you don't need no bag. You don't need no penny bag. <laughs> You don't need a penny pack of that, right? Well, I'm doing this for medicinal, medicinal, medicinal purpose. There ain't nothing wrong with you. You just want to get high. You about to learn the most high God. And so we're dealing with the 10, 10, 10 duns, muscles, and tension, hypertension, blood, all that's got ten, tendencies, the tendency to smoke and to, to overeat and to drink. We need to deal with those tendencies. So uh, Fox 6, WBRC, uh, J.J. Pruitt, every time we've ever, ever asked them to come out, they help us get started in our community. We're calling it healing the village, healing the whole village, healing the village. Therefore, we're inviting people on all levels. We did that with the house party. Senior citizens, uh, we are the adolescents, the millennials, the choir members. Everybody need to be there. Trustees. And it, we got presenters coming in. Stan Rose, God bless her. She's uh, overseeing this whole thing here, overseeing our bodies. And uh, that, of course, will be taking place, as we uh, told you, on the, you got a little time here. On the 22nd, that's a Monday, Monday night, okay? So let me give you some uh, information on this. I'm going to read it here. Keep the flyer up and do all as you need to. Uh, Sand Rose will be uh, stepping this thing off, kicking off what we call stepping to attention, Sand Rose. So I'm sure there'll be some step aerobics going on there. And then watch this. Uh, T-Wheel Productions, uh, uh, senior, uh, senior Fit a program with Tracy Williams. That's for the senior citizens. We want the senior citizens. Uh, nobody's too old, whether they got you doing the muscle exercises, sitting in a chair, kicking your leg, kind of like they do at Lake Shore, that kind of thing. Come on, get the blood circulating, not just on communion. Uh, T-Wheel Production, Senior Fit with Tracy Williams. And then Steel Strength, Steel Strength Training. I call it STT. STT, Steel Strength, uh, S, I'm sorry, SST, Steel Strength uh training, SST, uh, dealing with weights, 
right? Muscles, tendons, abs, right? You're going to be dealing with abs? Absolutely we are. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. Still uh, strength training, uh, weight there, uh, muscles with Nate, with Nate. And then squad fitness uh, will be done by Chris's squad fitness. So, And then we'll, a little bit later we'll announce who will be helping us out with nutrition and with bad habits or tendencies. So uh, the whole year we're trying to get you ready, not just financially, right, uh, as a, a Monday through Friday, your, your job, your career, your business, and your taxes. We're trying to get you ready. Uh, as it relates to your body, and on Sundays, we get ready for your spirit, right? So if you're going to be made whole, may the very God of peace sanctify you, First Thessalonians 5, 20, say, holy. Everybody got all excited when Michael Stampley was saying holy, beautiful, H-O-L-Y. But you ain't going to be able to be H-O-L-Y if you ain't W-H-O-L-L-Y. You're going to be joining the angels on the other side. He'll take you up out of here. So, yeah, we want to be H-O-L-Y. But we also, the question is, do you want to be made W-H-O-L-E? Do you want to be whole or wholly thine? Consecrate me now. So we're excited about what all that God is doing. A lot of get more than Congress and some other things we're getting ready to announce. Some wonderful opportunities even in February as we continue to allow the lion to roll. I got to get out of here. It's 2024. So much is going on. Next week we'll give you... Uh, a whole lot more of that New Year's Eve service, and uh, we'll go in and out of it and give you some excerpts and some snippets from our cameo appearances, and we want to thank all of them that came out and said yes to us and spoke to us what the Lord was saying on a global level to more than Congress Faith Church, whether it's the Dr. Trims or uh, Bishop McClendon or Leon Timbo or uh, whoever it was, Kaylin Carr, uh, just go on our Facebook, you'll be able to see all of that. I mean, God is really up to something here at MTC. We're getting ready for a glorious year. Come go with us. Come grow with us. I'm out. Know these words. Satan, well, he's defeated. His darkness is his bell. Jesus is absolutely, um, undeniably, uncontestably, unregrettably, and hopefully unforgettably, Lord. He's made you and I to be more than conquerors. God bless. Amen.